do that in a couple of seconds. Stop. Moins une minute. Okay, we welcome everybody around the world viewing us on arianspace.com. Special greetings to the people watching live in Argentina through the public television from uh, Technopolis at RSAT headquarters, also at INVAP headquarters, Airbus Defense and Space in Europe. NBN has viewing parties all across the country. SSL has a viewing party in Palo Alto, California. And, of course, a personal greeting to my co-workers at Biosat all around the world. We built the complex ground segment equipment for SkyMuster. Oh, and six-year-old Bailey Brooks, here it comes. We're going to launch your satellite, SkyMuster. A tous les DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage de CAP, décollage. Watching an Arian 5 thunder into the sky from CSG. A minute into the launch, and the Arian 5 has already broken the sound barrier here at Corbu. And this massive Jupiter facility literally shaking. We can feel it now. 1,300 tons of thrust breaking the Arian 5, free from the bonds of Earth's gravity. 90% of that power coming from the two boosters, each one 31 meters tall, burning 240 tons of solid propellant in two minutes. That's that's better than two tons a second. When the boosters have done their job in a little less than a minute from right now, Ariane will be 70 kilometers into the sky. It'll be racing away from us at more than 1.6 kilometers a second, faster than a bullet. The information coming down to us at Gilat, the tracking station on a mountain just behind us here at the Jupiter facility. The next major event is the burnout and the jettison of those two solid rocket boosters. You're going to be able to see it live on the screen. It'll happen in about uh, 13 seconds from right now when those boosters have uh, completed uh, their job at uh, 2 minutes 20 seconds into the mission. So watch for that. And look at those pictures. In the clear skies above Koru, the boosters have uh, done their job. We don't need them anymore. Talk about losing weight. On the pad, Arian 5 was 774 tons, roughly. We're now down to 180 tons. And in the rocket business, when you get lighter, you go a lot faster. And there you see some video from a previous mission of uh, the rockets, uh, the boosters dropping away. Arian 5 now closing in on 100 kilometers in the sky, traveling at 150, uh, make that uh, 2.8, uh, 2.1 kilometers uh, per second. Speed number tonight, by the way, 9.3 is the uh, magic number. Next up, the jettison of the fairing. It's protected the satellites from the elements on the ground. And in the early days of launch, early moments of launch, we don't need it anymore, and so very shortly, you are going to see and hear, there it is, on the animation. Separation de la coiffe. And the DDO has announced it. Here's uh, the fairing uh, dropping away from us uh, this evening on the flight. We just lost another uh, two tons, by the way. There's some images from a previous mission. Technically, we were in space, but we still have a long way to go. But uh, things are going fine for Ariane 5. 
And we continue to uh, see the 3D animation. We're at 128 uh, kilometers into uh, uh, the sky and already 300 kilometers uh, downrange uh, from us here at uh, Kourou and closing in on 3 uh, kilometers uh, per second. The main stage, or EPC, is now burning. It uh, burns for about Special greetings minutes. to the people watching live in Argentina and, uh, to the public the television from uh, Technopolis at our sat headquarters, uh, also at INVAP headquarters. It uh, gulps uh, 320 kilograms, about 700 uh, pounds of fuel a second, 500 times more than a uh, jet engine. Uh, you just saw that... Uh, graph on the side of the screen. We're going to see that a whole lot more tonight. And that depicts uh, the uh, trajectory that we want to uh, be going in uh, this evening. And again, we are right down the middle. Uh, everything is going normal, as you heard the uh, DDO uh, just announced. 152 kilometers into uh, the sky uh, right now. Gilat is uh, the tracking station that is uh, tracking us uh, right now. And things continue to uh, go uh, normal uh, this evening on the uh, Ariane flight. We're going to be seeing some replays coming up in a moment. And again, uh, a very, very, very impressive uh, replays uh, from the pad. Those will be coming in a second. You see the uh, 3D images of what's happening uh, right now uh, in the uh, sky. Here's the first of those replays we mentioned. Il reste three minutes of propulsion de l'EPC. La trajectoire just est incredible to watch that Arian 5 jump off the pad. You know, one of the uh, questions that I frequently get when people ask me, uh, why am I going to French Guiana to launch a rocket? Well, the Kourou space base is located about 500 kilometers north of the equator, and the Earth rotates much faster at the equator than it does, say, at the Kennedy Space in Florida. Thus, the uh, Ariane 5 gets a huge boost from the Earth's rotation, and that allows satellite operators, as you see another great replay here, uh, that allows satellite operators in many cases to launch heavier payloads and to add more fuel to their bird, increasing their operational life. Thus, uh, the longer it lives, the revenue you can generate. So the bottom line is it really does pay off in the long run to launch your satellite from the Amazon jungle. And uh, there you see the uh, planification minister from Argentina, who is uh, here with us uh, this evening. Also, uh, Jean-Michel uh, Casa, who is the French ambassador uh, to Argentina. Just some of the dignitaries who uh, are here this evening at uh, Kourou. The Ariane 5, uh, by the way, will uh, shortly uh, be picked up by our uh, tracking Project station nominal. in Natal, Brazil. You see that everything remains nominal. There's that curve that I was talking about. Take a look at that real quick up on the right hand side. And that uh, little dot is what you want to see following that curve perfectly. And it is. That means we're going uh, right down the middle. Uh, tonight uh, we are going to be using uh, five tracking stations. Karu has de la the uh, uh, la station. Natal, Brazil, de station. Brazil is Natal. Then out in the middle of the Atlantic is the Ascension Islands, and uh, we have a tracking station there. The west coast of Africa is uh, Liberville, uh, Gibbon, and on the east coast, uh, Melindy, Kenya. Harry on sending data to those stations, and uh, it tells us how the flight is progressing in real time. That's why the DDO can say things are nominal. Uh, later engineers are going to pour over every bit of the data to determine exactly how things uh, worked. Next major event is the cutoff of the main stage or the EPC. You're going to see that blue flame disappear uh, and you'll see the separation of the main stage. 
there is the extinction of the foam, and shortly the main stage has completed its job. It drops away. It's going to fall into the ocean de l'EPC. off Africa, and uh, shortly you'll hear the call that the upper stage has ignited. It'll burn for 16 minutes. Great video from a previous flight of the, USCA. the first uh, stage dropping away. You heard the announcement from the DDO that the upper stage has ignited. Before ignition, by the way, two small rockets on either side of the upper stage fired. That allowed the upper stage to move away from the lower stage and we could safely ignite it. Uh, by the way, immediately after they did their job, we dumped them off because lighter rockets uh, fly uh, faster. And there you see again the depictions of our tracking stations. We're now going very, very fast. We're at over 7 point. To zero seven, almost 7.1 uh, kilometers per second. Arian 5 is well on its way to Africa. It's gaining speed by the second. And uh, we're seeing some of the key personnel and VIPs in the auditorium right below my broadcast location here. And uh, most of them arrived uh, yesterday here in Nikoru. They've been touring the space base uh, throughout uh, the last day or so. And they have the best seat in the house uh, for uh, the mission. History is being made uh, tonight by uh, SkyMuster. One of the most powerful telecom satellites ever, SkyMuster carries 202 KA band transponders that will deliver broadband service to an estimated 200,000 plus households in rural and remote Australia. SkyMuster represents the cutting edge of so-called high-throughput satellite capacity and technology. Combining extremely powerful KA band satellite payloads with advanced ground segment networking software and hardware technology, SkyMuster will deliver ultra-fast broadband service to consumers and businesses in uh, and across Australia. Biosat, the company I work for, built 10 massive earth stations and gateway facilities all across the continent. Once Sky Muster goes into operation, the life of Bailey Brooks, that little six-year-old girl we talked about, uh, who emerged as the face of the satellite, her painting uh, was on the fairing of the Ariane 5, all of her friends, uh, their lives will change forever as broadband will be at uh, their fingertips, and uh, that is going to be a life-changing experience uh, for little uh, uh, Bailey uh, Brooks. At 11 minutes and uh, 48 seconds, time now to hear about uh, Sky Muster. 